Brian Halcrow, as you heard there, uh, a player who's been around an awful long time. And he hasn't won on the ultimate pool circuit as of yet. He hasn't gone anywhere near as well as he would have liked on the ultimate pool circuit as of yet. He's been working, as he mentioned, on, let's call it the mental fitness, which in this game, more than many, I'd say, Si, is, is so important. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And, but more than anything else, and we all really like Brian. He really is a lovely guy, but he's happy off the table, and that's the, the most important thing. We, we saw that sort of change in him when he played in the Players' Championship here last year, and, and he played better because of it. Unfortunately for him, his, his start here was a poor one, as poor a break as he could hope to hit. And he's actually not left the worst of chances here for Tom. These are very nicely laid out, considering how poor the break was from Brian. Yeah, and... If you are new with the Ultimate Pool Champions League, or even with Ultimate Pool in general, it's the game you know and love. English 8-ball, we are playing to international 8-ball rules. Very, very simple to follow. It's a very simple game to play. You pick your colour set, you pot your ball, you pot the 8-ball, you win the frame. So you can see in the scoreboard there, it's a best of seven or a race to four, whichever you prefer to say it. But there is a match clock ticking down, and it will be on every single match tonight of 20 minutes. So it's a race to four or zero on the clock. Whichever one comes first, if we get to zero, we'll take the score at the time, which may be a draw. All four players tonight will play each other in a round robin. Top of the group at the end of the night goes through to the last 16 of the Champions League. If there are two or more players tied on points at the end of the night, we'll use a six red shootout to separate them, of which... Brian Halcrow holds the world record. No, really. 15.09 <laughs> 15 seconds as Tom Cousins begins 2024 as he ended 2023 and rolls in the first eight ball of the calendar year and of the season. Yeah, and his performances so often are built on the back of this. He has got one of the most ridiculous breaks in the world right on cue <laughs> in goes the cue ball which will be cue ball in hand behind the line for brian halcrow there's nothing wrong with this break by the way he hits that pretty perfectly cue ball is pretty safe there you'd think somewhere near the middle of the top cushion but across comes the ball to knock it in that is an occupational hazard for any pool player nothing tc could really have done about it got a terrific split well the one thing you would say is despite how well that break was hit, it would have been dry had the cue ball not gone down. So realistically, I think that's why you saw not much reaction from Tom anyway, because the cue ball behind the line is what Brian would have had, essentially. It hasn't made too much of a difference. He will be wanting to have that break be more successful, though, over the course of this evening. But a good chance now for Brian to get his hand on the table and get to work. And this is where he really has to get to work for Brian if he has any chance of coming through tonight. He needs to make the most of the opportunities that come his way. There's nothing he can do about frame frame one other than he hit a poor break, it got cleared. That happens, but the way he deals with it is to take out the chances that he gets. And this is very much a, a wide open chance to go 1-1. One, one. A little bit wide and possibly a touch short of pace here would like to be at least straight on this red so he can just get to the middle of the table so he just has to play around with the yellows just a touch here he tries to screw up and down to get to the middle of the table and he's still going to get there strangely the, the red are two reds together there if he can't see the higher one of the two it becomes a slightly tricky ball. Not that easy to get. I mean, it looks so simple, but it's not that easy to get on that ball. Yeah, I get the sense the whole visit's been building up to this for Buzzer. Does he have any angle at all? Probably just about enough, is he? Looks like he's screwing it. Oh, he's played that well. He's 
controlled it well, and he's actually got onto it really nicely in such yeah. a way that he can now screw through the gap of the yellows to get onto the eight ball down to the bottom left. Because that was the problem. Getting on it low wasn't too bad, but then you're going up the table into yellows, but it looks like he's got straight enough to be able to just control this. Well, I think if Brian Halker wanted to pick the cue ball and put it down with his hand, it would probably be very close to where it is now. Yeah, yeah that'll do. It's just come far enough. It's a lovely visit to the table for Buzzer. Couple of really good touch shots there when required. And 1-1. One, one. It, it could be as simple thing as confidence. All of a sudden, when you're confident, you're seeing... You're seeing the table look easy. If you're not confident, you're seeing the table look difficult. And yeah, that's what Brian's been working on. Yeah, when you're feeling good, you see the solutions, and when you're feeling bad, you see the problems. He's going to make a ball here. That'll do. Then hasn't got that breakdown yet, Brian. His first one wasn't great. This one was probably even worse. But he's got a ball rolling in, and he can get to work. It's messy, though, isn't it? That's the problem with the break is if you make a ball, if you don't quite catch them right and they come out congested, then you've got to be very precise with the cue ball and to work it round. But you can make a case here for a, a clearance on the Reds. One thing you would say is Brian so far has exhibited the sort of game needed to take down a finish like this. It was very precise in the last frame. It wasn't an easy out. I completely agree. He's coming out of the red at the bottom. You may have to just bump the yellow here, get that out of the way. Leaves him thin on the next ball, though. So he's going away from the, the red in the triangle area. May leave that for last ball. Depends on where the eight ball goes, but looks like it might only just go in the right centre. A little bit lucky there. He'll take it. Absolutely take it. The red to right centre, he wants to be his connection to the red in the triangle area. He is straight enough here just to hold for the red to left centre, which gets him perfect. I mean, that really was. I mean, he gets the bump in the middle pocket, but he, he couldn't hope for that to land any better than that. Absolutely ideal. And I think even if he nudges the yellow here, it's the perfect place to be. And he's just stunned past it, but... It's absolutely ideal here. Coming out towards the halfway stage on the match clock. Yeah, again, lovely. Just be careful. You're going into the yellow, so you've just got to be careful that you don't sort of flick off the top side with too much pace and leave it awkward. Just dye it in and you should be fine. You yeah, see that little flick? That little flick on the yellow just makes this eight ball just a, a touch trickier. If they put too much more pace into that, it would have been very tricky. Still one he should make. Never in doubt. Just slides in off the near jaw. Very unfortunate with his first one. So gave this one even more. And it's a golden break. Oh, now wouldn't you know it. That. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, we have given the Tom Cousins break the big build-up. I mean, that is a sledgehammer, isn't it? <laughs> that reaction was amazing. So, eight minutes to go. Oh, no way! No way! <laughs> He's only waited three years, he says. And right on cue, Brian Halcrow follows Tom Cousins' golden break with one of his own. And if Tom Cousins looked a little sheepish and almost a little apologetic about his, absolutely none of that from Buzzer. He is buzzing. Uh, and exactly what I said, you can hear him there saying he's waited three years for it, and he has. That was an amazing moment for Brian Halcrow. It really was. So, back on the Tom Cousins break. 3-2 Brian Halcrow, he's on the hill all of a sudden. Tom Cousins, he hasn't, has he? Oh, he very nearly did. I mean, this will be some slow-mo replay to watch. Look how high he gets this cue ball. He puts everything into that. And all eyes are on that eight ball. 
Yeah, Brian's tracking it as well. I tell you what, though, for as quality as, as that break was, he's in. He's not got the easiest of finishes here. He's, he, he may not have an opening ball. Do you know what it is? It, we almost said this after after the last of Tom's breaks that he's taken so many balls off the table there that actually, if he's not on his first one, his his options are so limited. Yeah, I thought for a second there he was going to have to take the the red on the, the one he was nearest to as a double. And he probably would have done had there been maybe two minutes left in the match. But with six, because of the, the golden breaks, this one's gone along at a good pace. With, uh, with six minutes left, he knows he can afford a safety shot. And Brian doing the right thing here. That's really good play from Brian and, and maybe a tactical mistake from, from Tom because of it. Brian, it, with a 3-2 lead, is happy just to say, let's get more reds down by that eight ball more balls down by that eight ball and, and make it almost impossible for anyone to make a clearance. He'll happily let this clock run down for five and a half minutes here. Yeah, as he should. And to be honest, you're in Brian Halcrow's world here. Yeah. This is the sort of game that Brian will happily, happily, happily Fudge and weight and delay and stick just make things miserable for his opponent. Well, as well as having the fastest ever six red shootout, he also has the slowest ever frame it's against Josh such Kane a, last year. It's such a great contrast, it that is. is yeah, 20, I think it was a 22, 23 three minute frame it was against Josh in the Players' Championship. That little uh, mistake on the positional side there for Tom, I mean, he was taking the finish on, he was going to leave himself a double on the final red. But that, uh, that cannon on the on the red off the cushion left him no shot, and there was no attempt to pop that. That was just a case of he ran out of time and, and had no options on it. Worth noting that we're into the final five minutes as well, so we're down to 15 seconds a shot. And it makes such a difference. And Brian should run the clock here. He should not be trying to pop balls. Yeah, just keep it tight. <laughs> can't really get the red on the right hand side out without getting the yellow out otherwise he would have really gambled and just tried to get the red on the right out but it would move the yellow at the same time and can't do that would have risked popping the eight ball as well because of the yellow being there for me is it the right play for Brian to play the loss of turn get the red on the top left off the table here quite possibly and again didn't want to pot that If it wasn't for the match clock, Brian probably should have taken that loss of turn. He's played this. This is brilliant. It's not going to go. Some effort. Some effort. I think the red at the bottom does double to bottom right, so he does. Brian does have to be careful not to leave a sniff on this red. I think that's why he's played the yellow off the red, just to move the red away from the pocket. Problem he has, he's just snooking himself on the, the yellows he wants to play. He's massively in the driving seat here. Yeah, three minutes left on the clock. Oh, that's ideal if it stays up. Yeah, that'll do. Again, it's a strange situation, this. Not one that many players find themselves in but it does happen every now and then on ultimate pool where you're playing the clock rather than the scoreboard it is absolutely in Brian Alcro's interests here to run this one down it is so difficult for Tom Cousins to win this frame I think Tom can take this does it go bottom left that's what he's trying and he would have been on the double Slightly risky for Brian, leaving that on. I'd be tempted just to roll the yellow onto the red here. To really make sure it doesn't double. But make sure he can't see it. You don't want him to be able to, to knock that red out. Yeah, good shot. I actually think TC missed a bit of a trick with his last attempt in pot. 
I feel like he, he played it very, very quickly. And actually, he, he probably didn't need to. I think if he lines that pot up, you absolutely expect him to make it. But he was sort of in rush mode where he's almost just got down and played. I think he's um, running out of ideas here as well now. I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a nothing shot. I mean, he was trying to stop Brian from being able to see the two yellows at the top of the table and forcing him to play the other one. But Brian, he knows Brian wouldn't play it with any pace. Brian's tried to reverse it and has done exactly that. I suppose for TC now, nothing to be lost here by having a good old hit and hope. I oh, was put a red straight back where it was. Would you <laughs> believe that? What a fluke. And well, not worked out though. What have we got for his TC? He's looking to get it tracking into that middle pocket, which the cue ball has found itself in. That was an astonishing fluke. And you know, maybe that's an example of what's been in the mind for Brian Halcrow, because he'll be the first one to tell you that in previous iterations of his pro career, that red not only drops, but the other one goes into open table and he loses the frame. Maybe times are a changing for the buzzer. Yeah, and because of that hit and hope in the end from Tom, it means that Brian's not just going to run the clock down here, he's actually going to win the match. Yeah, a little bit of an early coupon buster, this one. Tom Cousins came into this night as the red-hot favourite, as he always does. But an early upset. Brian Halcrow will take the victory with a few...